Hey guys, welcome to chapter 18.2, part one. We are looking at the regulation of uh, gene expression and how it is done at the chromatin level. And we are looking specifically at eukaryotic genes. So once again, let's talk about how all the cells in our body uh, contain the same genetic code. Uh, so a brain cell is gonna have the same genome as a skin cell. There are, uh, there are exceptions, but let's not focus on those. Um, and what's surprising is that a cell will express uh, about, on average, 20% of its coding genes at a given moment, um, which is interesting. It's not very much. So, uh, so all of the DNA that is um, in our cells, a majority of it is non-coding. And then of that coding DNA, um, at a moment, only about 20% of it is being expressed. Um, so. It's amazing what we have in each one of our cells. And so highly differentiated cells, these are gonna be your uh, cells that do very specific jobs like nerve cells and muscle cells. These are highly differentiated. They're gonna express even fewer um, uh, genes at a moment. There is a couple of different sets of genes that we're gonna talk about. One is the housekeeping set of genes. Those housekeeping set of genes are gonna be expressed by most cells. These are the, the things, the, the actions or the traits that every cell is going to need to do. So like mitosis, every cell, pretty much every cell is gonna divide by mitosis. Um, pretty much every cell is gonna to need to uh, be able to make um, uh, lipids. Uh, so this is the, um, these are the cells that are, I mean, these are the genes that are going to do those jobs that every single cell need. Um, so those are your housekeeping genes. However, there are um, genes that are going to be uniquely expressed, um, another subset of these genes that are just uniquely expressed. And these are going to be the ones that are like the, uh, the genes that say you're a muscle cell. Um, they're very, um, this is, they're very specific to the function of that, uh, of that cell. And so this is going to allow for differential gene expression. In bacterial cells, most of the regulation is done uh, during transcription. And in eukaryotic cells, there's so much more complexity. Um, and part of this is allowed because of the amount of regulation that's done at every single level, at every step of the central dogma, uh, there is regulation. And all of these different um, opportunities allow for greater complexity of the organism. So one concept that we're going to see over and over again is that we have a finite amount of genetic material and we express it. The way that we mix and match it and put it back together is going to allow for a greater amount of variation or a greater amount of number of ways in how we use it, um, which goes back to the, um, the idea or the concept that we humans have the same number of chromosomes as a, as a type of simple worm However, we just have a greater capability of uh, expressing it in different ways. So the word chromatin includes not only DNA, but it also includes all of the packaging. And this packaging is a huge part of um, expression. And so it's a, a major part of the uh, um, role of expression during the chromatin level of expression. And so uh, in three different ways that we're going to talk about here. One, the placement of a gene's promoter site. So where that promoter place, uh, that promoter region is on the DNA, where it allows for the RNA, um, the RNA polymerase to attach onto and transcribe. If that is next to a nucleosome um, or scaffolding, it may have uh, less access. It may not be able to be expressed as often or at a, such a high rate uh, because it's being blocked. Um, so that is uh, one way. Another way is that uh, genes that are highly condensed, so this is heterochromatin, the more condensed uh, DNA is, uh, are going to be not expressed or expressed far less. Chemical modifications. We add chemicals to our DNA or actually more specifically to the histones um, and nucleotides can influence the, um, the chromatin structure. 
and therefore expression. So let's talk a little bit about these chemical modifications um, to histones specifically. They play a very direct role in transcription. Um, so histone tails, we know that there are eight histones in a nucleosome and that the tails will have a positive charge while DNA has a negative charge. Um, and so by adding ke uh, chemicals like acetyls, methyls, and phosphates, this is going to change the way that they are expressed. So histone acetylation, that is the addition of an acetyl to the uh, amine group on a histone tail. Um, and this is going to, what it does is, this is going to block the connection or the attraction between the positive tail and the negative uh, DNA, which is going to allow for that DNA to uncoil and it'll allow for uh, greater access of RNA polymerase to get in and to transcribe that DNA. And so that's going to promote uh, expression. Whereas methylation is going to lead to uh, further condensing. And that is when a, uh, a, a methyl group is added to the, um, to the tail. And that's going to, like I said, um, allow it to further condense. And there are also other um, additions of different chemical groups that are going to allow for binding sites of enzymes so that enzymes can latch on and modify the DNA in different ways. Um, let's just note that that happens, but let's not concentrate too heavily on that. Let's just understand that that is part of expression. DNA methylation occurs um, when enzymes methylate the cytosines uh, in that nucleotide strand. And this happens in most eukaryotic cells, but it's going to occur more often in plants and animals and fungi. Um, so the um, genes that uh, have long stretches of inactive DNA or the chromosomes that have long stretches of inactive DNA are going to be more heavily methylated. A good example of this is the mammalian X chromosome. So when an embryo is developing, uh, there is going to be two X chromosomes, one from mom and one from dad. Only one of those X chromosomes is going to be uh, expressed, and so the other is going to be very heavily methylated and uh, sort of shut down. And that is called the inactivated uh, X chromosome. There's an interesting uh, video on that right here. I'll put that in the description. And the original pattern of chemical markers in the DNA while a, an embryo is developing is passed on. And that is referred to as genomic imprinting. So if certain genes are methylated, they're going to stay methylated and that's going to be passed on throughout the um, successive uh, divisions. However, um, there are genes that can be unmethylated. So those methyl groups can be removed. So if you're thinking about whether life or whether a person is the result of nature versus nurture, it's truly a combination. Uh, you are the result of the sequence of your A's, T's, C's, and G's, but your environment plays a role on what is going to be uh, methylated or unmethylated. So if you, let's say, start exercising, um, that's going to change how your uh, genes are expressed. And if you start eating healthy, that'll change how your genes are expressed. Or if you don't get enough sleep, that's going to change how your genes are expressed. And that's going to be passed on from gene, I mean, from cell to cell to cell. Now, generally, these, um, these sequences or these, um, these methyl groups or these chemical modifications are going to be, once uh, you create a, an egg or a sperm cell, they're going to not be passed on. They're sort of wiped clean. Um, and so this epigenetic inheritance is not passed on um, completely. Some are, so there have been found uh, genes uh, for thrifty metabolisms have been found to be passed on, and there are a number, number of genes that um, the epigenetic inheritance is passed on, but generally it is wiped clean um, to when the sperm or the egg is delivered um, to the offspring. And so the Methylation patterns from apparent cells are largely erased during gamete formation. Um, and epigenetics might explain uh, 
why one identical twin has a disease like schizophrenia and while the other does not. And the same is true with various types of cancer. So where um, a fetus is in the uterus is going to play a role in which chemicals they are exposed to or what their environment is is going to be different. Um, and so that's going to turn some genes off for one baby and other genes on for the other. Um, and so once again, there's an interesting TED Talk right here, and I will put that um, in the description. And I hope this helps.